The Children of Odin, a retelling of the Eddas and Volsun saga by Parak Kolum, with art done by Willy Pogani. Sif's Golden Hair, how Loki wrought mischief in Asgard. All who dwell in Asgard, the Iser and the Asenir, who were the gods and goddesses, and the Vanir, who were the friends of the gods and goddesses, were wroth with Loki. It was no wonder they were wroth with him, for he had let the giant Thiassi carry off Iduna and her golden apples. Still, it must be told that the show they made of their wrath made Loki ready to do more mischief in Asgard. One day, he saw a chance to do mischief that made his heart rejoice. Sif, the wife of Thor, was lying asleep outside her house. Her beautiful golden hair flowed all round her. Loki knew how much Thor loved that shining hair, and how greatly Sif prized it because of Thor's love. Here was his chance to do a great mischief. Smilingly, he took out his shears, and he cut off the shining hair, every strand and every tress. She did not waken while her treasure was being taken from her, but Loki left Sif's head cropped and bare. Thor was away from Asgard. Coming back to the city of the gods, he went to his house. Sif, his wife, was not there to welcome him. He called to Sif, but no glad answer came from her. To the palaces of all the gods and goddesses Thor went, but in none of them did he find Sif, his golden-haired wife. When he was coming back to his house, he heard his name whispered. He stopped, and then a figure stole out from behind a stone. A veil covered her head, and Thor scarce knew that this was Sif, his wife. As he went to her, she sobbed and sobbed. Oh, Thor, my husband, she said, do not look upon me. I am ashamed that you should see me. I shall go from Asgard and from the company of the gods and goddesses. I shall go hard as far time and live amongst the dwarves. I cannot bear that any of the dwellers in Asgard should look upon me now. Oh, Sif, cried Thor, what has happened to change you? I have lost the hair of my head, said Sif. I have lost the beautiful golden hair that you, Thor, loved. You will not love me any more, and as so I must go away down the Svartheim into the company of the dwarves. They are as ugly as I am now. Then she took the veil off her head, and Thor saw that all of her beautiful hair was gone. She stood before him, shamed and sorrowful, and he grew into a mighty rage. Who was it that did this to you, Sif? He said, I am Thor, the strongest of all the dwellers in Asgard, and I shall see to it that all the powers the gods possess will be used to get your fairness back. Come with me, Sif. And taking his wife's hand in his, Thor went off to the council house, where the gods and goddesses were. Sif covered her head with her veil, for she would not have the gods and goddesses look upon her shorn head. But from the anger in Thor's eyes, all saw that the wrong done to Sif was great indeed. And Thor told of the cutting of her beautiful hair. A whisper went round the council house. It was Loki that did this. No one else in Asgard would have done a deed so shameful. One said to another. Loki, it was who did it, said Thor. He has hidden himself, but I shall find him and I will slay him. Nay, not so, Thor, said Odin, the father of the gods. Nay, no dweller in Asgard may slay another. I shall summon Loki to come before us here. It is for you to make him, and remember that Loki is cunning and able to do many things. Bring back uh, to Sif the beauty of her golden hair. Then the call of Odin, the call that all in Asgard have to hearken to, went through the city of the gods. Loki heard it, and he had to come from his hiding place and enter the house where the gods held their council. And when he looked on Thor and saw the rage that was in his eyes, and when he looked on Odin and saw the sternness in the face of the father of the gods, he knew that he would have to make amends for the shameful wrong he had done to Sif. Said Odin, There is a thing that you, Loki, have to do. Restore to Sif the beauty of her hair. Loki looked at Odin. Loki looked at Thor. And he saw what was... Uh, said would have to be done. His quick mind searched to find a way of restoring Sif the beauty for golden hair. I shall do as you command, Odin Allfather, he said. But 
Before we tell you of what Loki did to restore the beauty of Sif's golden hair, we must tell you of the other beings besides the gods and goddesses who were in the world at the time. First, there's the Vanyar. When the gods who were called the Iser came to the mountain on which they built Asgard, they found other beings there. These were not wicked and ugly like the giants, they were beautiful and friendly. The Vanyar, they were named. Although they were beautiful and friendly, the Vanyar had no thought of making the world more beautiful or more happy. In that way, they differed from the Iser, who had such a thought. The Iser made peace with them, and they lived together in friendship, and the Vanyar came to do things that helped the Iser to make the world more beautiful and more happy. Freya, whom the giant wanted to take away with the sun and the moon as reward for building the wall around Asgard, was of the Vanyar. Other beings of the Vanyar were Frey, who was the brother of Freya, and Noyard, who was their father. On the earth below, there were other beings, the dainty elves who danced and fluttered about, attending to the trees and flowers and grasses. The Vanyar were permitted to rule over the elves. Then below the earth, in the caves and hollows, there was another race, the dwarves or gnomes, little twisted creatures who were both wicked and ugly but who were the best craftsmen in the world. In the days when neither the Iser nor the Vanir were friendly to him, Loki used to go down to Svartheim, the dwarves a dwelling below the earth. And now that he was commanded to restore to Sif the beauty for hair, Loki thought of help he might get from the dwarves. Down, down, through the winding passages in the earth he went. And he came at last to where the dwarves, who were the most friendly to him, were working in their forges. All the dwarves were master smiths. And when he came upon his friends, he found them working hammer and tongs, beating metal into many shapes. He watched them for a while, and took note of the things they were making. One was a spear, so well balanced and made that it would hit whatever mark was thrown, no matter how bad the aim the thrower had. Another was a boat that could sail on any sea, but could be folded up so that it would go into one's pocket. The spear was called Gungir, and the boat was called Skidbladir. Loki made himself very agreeable to the dwarves, praising their work, and promising them things that only the dwellers in Asgard could give, things that the dwarves longed to possess. He talked to them a till the little ugly folk thought that they would come to own Asgard and all that was in it. At last, Loki said to them, Have you got a bar of fine gold you can hammer into threads? Into threads so fine that they will be just like the hair of Sif, Thor's wife? Only the dwarves can make a thing so wonderful. Ah, there is the bar of gold. Hammer into those fine threads and the gods themselves will be jealous of your work. Flattered by Loki's speeches, the dwarves who were in the forge took up the bar of fine gold and flung it into the fire. Then, taking it out and putting it upon their anvils, they worked at the bar with their tiny hammers until they beat into threads that were as fine as the hairs of one's head. But that was not enough. They had to be as fine as the hairs on Sif's head, and these were finer than anything else. They worked on the threads over and over again until they were as fine as the hairs on Sif's head. The threads were as bright as sunlight, and when Loki uh, took up the mass of worked gold, it flowed from his raised hand down to the ground. It was so fine that it could be put into his palm, and it was so light that not a bird would feel its weight. Then Loki praised the dwarves more and more, and he made more and more promises to them. He charmed them all, though they were an unfriendly and suspicious folk. And before he left them, he asked for the spear and the boat he had seen them make, the spear Gungir and the boat's uh, Skidbladir. The dwarves gave him these things, though in a while they wondered at themselves for giving them. Back to Asgard, Loki went. He walked into the council house where the dwellers in Asgard were gathered. He met the stern look in Odin's eyes and the rageful look in Thor's eyes with smiling good humor. Off with thy veil, O Sif, he said. And when poor Sif took off her veil, he put upon her shorn head the wonderful mass of gold he held in his palm. Over her shoulders the gold fell, fine, soft, and shining as her own hair. And the Iser and the Isenir, the gods and the goddesses, and the Van and Vana, when they saw Sif's head covered again with a shining web, laughed and clapped their hands in gladness. 
and the shining web held the sieve's head as if indeed it had roots and was growing there. 